What we're wanting to talk about today is a tool that we use for assessing the suitability of land for sustainable land use, the Land Use Capability System. It was developed initially in the United States and then adapted to suit New Zealand conditions. It's not a way of telling you how to use land. All it does is simply uh, assess its suitability for sustainable use. You follow a procedure you start initially by looking at the geology of the land and that can tell you several things. First of all, it can tell you how fertile the soils may be that develop on it. Uh, it can tell you whether the land is stable or not. And it can also dictate the land form. And when we look across this land ahead of us here, uh, you will notice the gently rolling land in the middle and the steeper land in the background. That is grey wacky, a hard sandstone. And this side, the gently rolling stuff, is typical of a strip that runs from here right through to the Bay of Islands. And then there's that steeper strip of harder grey wacky that runs along the top there. And then when you get beyond that, out towards Patau, you're into the gently rolling land again. So that shapes the land for us. The next step, once you've mapped the geology and you can use uh, existing geology maps uh, and just check that against the land that is there, any rock outcrops, quarries, anything like that, you then start looking at the soil types. And because it's on grey wacky, we know the sort of soil types we need to be looking for. You map the soil type. And then the next important thing is slope. And uh, in this case, we would uh, we'd measure the slope using an abney level or some similar method. Or if you have, the, have contour data available, you can measure that off aerial photographs. So the slope, we assess that uh, on a scale of uh, A to G. A slope is 0 to 3 degrees, flat land, uh, right through to G slope, which is greater than 36 degrees, extremely steep. There's some little tricks in it. Uh, cattle, apparently, can't walk up and down a slope over 26 degrees. And uh, an E slope is from 21 to 26 degrees. So we know that when we get to 26 degrees, we start getting those little terracets or stock tracks around the hillside because the cattle walk around the hillside rather than up and down it. We also know that many soil types are quite unstable once you're starting to get to that, that sort of slope. So you've mapped uh, geology, rock type, the soil type and slope. You then record any active erosion that is taking place, uh, so any slips or any signs of old slips. And on some of this country, you can see old slip scars. In many cases, uh, they have probably reverted back to bush. So where you get patches of bush, it's probably an old slip scar. Just behind us here, this land in front of us, it's got some big folds in it. And that is due to this rock we're on, right where we're standing is sandstone. It overlies mudstone and the whole lot is sliding off down the hillside, very slowly, but enough to show on the surface. So that's erosion recorded. And the next thing you record is vegetation. And uh, that can be pasture or forest, scrub, or whatever vegetation is on there. That gives you a, a picture of what the land is at the present time. You then check out all sorts of data, uh, how, how much it can produce in pasture, uh, whether it can grow good trees, and using all that data, you assess it on a one to eight scale. Now, class one land is very versatile. It can be used for almost anything. You can grow horticulture on it, you can uh, grow grass, any crops, trees, it's very versatile. And our most versatile land in Northland is the free-draining volcanic soils that we get round Manu 
and around Ohaiwai. Places where there's not much stone, free draining uh, so that you can cultivate all the year round and would be well suited to market gardening, avocado growing, those sorts of crops. At the other end of the scale we have class 8 and class 8 land is so steep or erodible or unproductive that it has no productive value and in many cases it is purely there for conservation values. Uh, top of Mount Manaya, for example, that, the vertical slopes, solid rock of no productive value. Coastal cliffs and the foredune on the sand country, land that it's quite important to keep it in protective vegetation. In between we have classes one to four, land that can be cultivated and cropped. Class five, that gently rolling country we can see in the middle ground there would be class five, well suited to pastoral production, too steep to cultivate, although you may cultivate it once to get it into grass on the easier country. Not totally free of erosion. If we got a big storm through here, you could get the odd slip on it, but not really a problem. Uh, the steeper land beyond would be class six. And we may, uh, right in the, the skyline on that really steep land, you would be starting to get onto class seven, where they were getting real limitations for pastoral use or for forestry.